Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So I know it's kind of late in the month for me to finally be getting my first book review up, but we're here, it's happening, and it's one of my books off my most anticipated 2023 list, All Hallows by Christopher Golden. So I had not heard of Christopher Golden until last year when I read Road of Bones, which was sent to me in my Nightworms package. Um, and I really liked the book. I didn't love it, but I did really enjoy his writing style. So when I saw that he had a new novel coming out and then I saw what the premise was, I was like, oh my god, I have to read it. Unfortunately, this book came out in winter and this definitely needed to be released in like September or October because the entire thing is set on Halloween night and it is so spooky and eerie and just perfectly Halloween that like everybody should read this book around the holiday season because it just nails so many great fun spooky aspects of uh, Halloween and I was stoked with that. All right so let's read the inside flap. So it says as I just said it's Halloween night 1984 in Coventry Massachusetts and two families are unraveling. Up and down the street, secrets are being revealed, and all the while, mixed in with the trick-or-treaters of all ages, four children who do not belong are walking door-to-door, -door, merging with the kids of Parmenter Road. Children in vintage costumes with faded, eerie makeup. They seem terrified, and they beg the neighborhood kids to hide them away to keep them safe from the cunning man. There is a small clearing in the woods now that was never there before, and a blackthorn tree that doesn't belong at all. These odd children claim that the cunning man is coming for them and they want the local kids to protect them. But with families falling apart and the neighborhood splintered by bitterness, who will save the children of Parmenter Road? All Hallows, the one night when everything is a mask. I really, really enjoyed reading this. Um, this to me, and I wasn't expecting it when I went into it, read like a horror anthology. It reminded me so much of Trick or Treat, um, not just because it's like set on Halloween night, but because it was told um, through a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different families throughout the night and kind of how their paths all cross. I could see this working really well as a movie. Um, it was very visually interesting, like the images that I came up with in my head from reading the text was really, really cool and spooky and eerie. Um, and I just had a blast with it. Like it really made me feel like I was reading just an awesome horror movie anthology. Sort of like the Mortuary Collection as well. Um, I loved how prominent Halloween was. I love that trick-or-treating and Halloween parties and um, like haunts, like haunted woods where like actors come out and scare you were like major themes of this. It just felt like a very realistic Halloween. I loved the 1980s setting. It actually didn't quite click to me that it was in the 1980s um, as I was reading the book for the first couple of chapters, um, but I just found it so breathtaking and I just found it so refreshing and fun and just so Halloween and I feel like it's so rare that we find horror novels focused on Halloween. I feel like it's almost like a cliche and therefore it's avoided. Horror movies not so much but it's it's very hard for me to pinpoint actual horror novels focused on Halloween. Um, and I just thought this did such a brilliant brilliant job with it. I thought all of the characters were really cool and they were very unique. Um, and unfortunately you get attached to some of them and then bad things happen to those characters. Um, and I really didn't quite see the twist coming. Um, and I really, really liked that. I thought the cunning man was absolutely horrifying. I loved the visuals attached to him and he kind of has two different forms in the novel. Um, and I thought both were terrifying, but his final form is so creepy. And it reminded me almost of like, an even more depraved version of the cunning man. Um, sorry, of Slender Man, not the cunning man. Um, and I just found it so cool. I loved how every single story that you read about at the beginning kind of unraveled into a big plot at the end. Like it all came together in this kind of mismatched quilt of really cool characters winding up with other really cool characters. Um, and I even like the unlikable characters I found to be really intriguing to read about. There's one character named Donnie who's kind of a crappy husband and father and even his chapters were really intriguing to read about. Um, you really root for the character, a lot of the characters in this book. Um, you get perspectives from good guys, bad guys, kind of middle of the road guys. Um, and I just really, really thought it was fun. Where, where the book kind of lost me, so I'm going to tell you right now, this was a four star read for me, is I just kind of felt like 
it could have leaned more into like the slasher aspect it was setting up or maybe balanced out a slightly happier ending. I feel like it just didn't quite commit to one side enough and I'm not really sure which one I would have wanted to see more of. Um, but I do kind of wish that there was a little bit more slasheriness or a little more happiness at the end and it's kind of right in between where it was like, oh, like maybe one or two more like creative kills could have been really cool or like maybe don't kill one of those characters because I really, really liked them and there's no happy ending for that family if you do that kind of thing. Um, so it was definitely kind of teetering on that, like I either wanted less or I wanted more, but I'm not sure which way I wanted to go. Um, and it definitely took a while to get to the horror. And I think that was one of the things that is so unique about this, is you spend a lot of time with our main characters knowing that something bad's gonna happen because it's a horror novel. Um, and then like bad things start to happen and like your main characters are still kind of safe. And then at the, like the last third, everything just goes crazy. Um, and so like I wasn't necessarily expecting that because it kind of lulled you into this false sense of security that characters you like were gonna be safe and then they weren't. Um, but I really, really, really enjoyed it. And I love this cover because it, when you read the book, you'll understand what like the cunning man looks like. And you can kind of see him right here. And I didn't realize that until I'd finished the book and like really looked at the cover again. And I just absolutely adore it. I loved the lore that went into it. I want to know more. There's so much lore that goes into the cunning man and where he's from and why he's there. And I just want to read more about him like there was so much on him that I even like googled to see if he was like an urban legend and it doesn't seem like he is it seems like it's something that Christopher Golden made up but he was so freaking cool um so so creepy like so so scary looking um and the interaction he has with the character Charlie I thought was absolutely the most interesting part of his character um I loved that aspect it wasn't something that I expected to see and I really loved how it connected to um, both Charlie and like aspects of Charlie's childhood as well as Charlie's um, family, um, his youth. They really played upon like the innocence of youth in this and I just thought it was so good. Um, I was I was really, really thrilled with this. I, I, I knew I was gonna like this book, I think, but I don't think I expected to like it as much as I did. Again, it's not a five star read because there were just a couple moments where I was like, oh, like if they had done this, I feel like it would have been blown away, or if they had leaned more into that, like I feel like this book would have been perfect. So there was definitely moments like that, but this should definitely go on everybody's like read around the Halloween season list. Just because it truly, truly felt so Halloween. -y. And I'm trying to think, like other books that I've read that are around the Halloween season are like The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury, of course, which I don't like. And then um the X Hex and like the Kiss Curse books, that series. Um, very Halloween-y and super, super fun, but not scary. And this one has just that element of, like, dark and scary, and I loved it. Anyway, if you guys have any other great Halloween read recommendations, please send them my way, because this also just made me feel like it was October, and it's March. And I felt like I was literally in autumn on a crisp October night with, like, the cold air and the smell of firewood and apples, and it was awesome. So I really, really, really enjoyed this. If you're looking for a good Halloween book, if you've never read Christopher Golden before, check this out. Um, this really, really impressed me and I had an absolute blast with it. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.